Welcome everyone to this briefing brought to you by the Israel Defense and Security Forum, IDSF. In Hebrew, our name is Habitronistim. IDSF is the leading Israeli organization advocating for strong national security oriented policies to guide the state of Israel. We are a movement of more than 20,000 people, including many reserve officers and operators from all branches of the Israel Defense establishment. Thank you, of course, to all of our viewers and supporters for tuning into this briefing, as well as many of our previous briefings. It's very important to us to be able to bring you the analysis of this war and really behind the headlines, uh, what is happening. I am very honored to be joined today by Gil Hoffman, who is the Executive Director of Honest Reporting, which fights for Israel in the international mainstream and social media, and a lecturer on political strategy at Israel's College of Management, and served for 24 years as the Chief Political Correspondent and Analyst for the Jerusalem Post, where he's now a regular columnist. The Aljamino website recently named him one of the top 100 people positively influencing Jewish life alongside President Biden and Zelensky and Prime Ministers Sunak and Netanyahu. He was raised in Chicago, graduated magna cum laude from Northwestern University School of Journalism, and served in the IDF spokesperson unit. He's lectured in all major English-speaking countries in the world. That's quite an accomplishment. More than half the Canadian provinces and recently made history in Hawaii by becoming the first Israel speaker to have lectured in all 50 states. He lives with his family in Jerusalem. Gil, thank you so much for joining me today. Pleasure being with you, Moshe, here on this rainy day in Jerusalem. Absolutely. And as I, as I mentioned before, I believe you're the first uh, Chicagoan to come on this briefing since we started. So it's, uh, it's great to have you. Um, let's, let's cover a big question to start with, and then we'll get in more details. We know, of course, that this war in Israel is fought on many different fronts. There is the battlefield in Gaza. There's the battlefield up in, in uh, southern Lebanon, the Houthis, Iran. There's, of course, um, the diplomatic front. And then there's the media front. Are we winning the war on the media front? What do you think? I think that we're doing a lot better than we have in the past. I mean, uh, if we weren't making significant progress on the media front, the war would have been over a long time ago without accomplishing any of our goals. You know, the last few wars in Gaza ended after a few days because of tremendous international pressure on Israel to end the war. Now, obviously, this war is very justified and the world supported us going to war, uh, but uh, it wouldn't be able to last this long if it weren't for the success that there's been on the mainstream and social media battlefields, where uh, the media in this war ha have looked terrible. And uh, the organizations like mine, Honest Reporting, have highlighted it. And I think the IDF has also gone a long way in learning from past mistakes that it made on that media battlefield of not taking it seriously. The spokesman of the army, Daniel Hagari, I went to a briefing for top English spokespeople, uh, the ones that you're seeing on TV, like like uh, Kenrikus, that's part of the, this organization, and um, uh, Peter Lerner and Daron Spielman uh, a couple months before the war started. And Hagari says to us, you guys are the hourglass. You're the ones who give us the time to operate on our military battlefield and accomplish our goals uh, of restoring security. And I was just so impressed to see that there was a spokesman of the army who got that, finally. Um, and because of that, I, I think that there has been success and winning on that media battlefield is the key to winning on the military battlefield, uh, which, please God, uh, should happen. But the world is going to need to be patient. Okay, so walk me through the, the process, so to speak, of how the media directly impacts Israel's capacity to, to keep fighting. Meaning, what is the concern that the media had, puts out bad reports and suddenly the prime minister calls off the battle? Meaning, how does that, what would be the, the concern? The concern would be that uh, there would be pressure from, uh, that indirectly or indirectly, from the media on the world leaders, so from President Biden on down and other leaders around the world, because uh, that's what they've done in, in the past. Um, we have a war now where uh, the media got such egg on their face from their incorrect reporting about what happened at Al-Ali Hospital and uh, 
the photographers that we revealed had awareness at various points of what was going on and came in way too early. Um, and the photographers and journalists that we fought, caught helping Hamas and having connections with Hamas, people realize that they can't believe the information coming out of Gaza. And uh, I think that the people who are on this call who are very involved themselves in social media, just looking down at the names over here uh, in the attendees, 400, wow. Um, I think that you can all pat yourselves on the back because no matter where you live around the world, if you've been active on social media in this war, you've each played a small role in, in ensuring that the war will continue until Israel's security is restored and, and, and please God, hostages home alive and safe. For sure. I think one of the things that we all no honest reporting for in the, this past uh, few months is the, is the episode with the photographers in the New York Times. Are, are you able just to tell that story for us and for those of us that may not be familiar? Because I think it's super important. Sure. Uh, so there are different standards for who can be a photographer, a cameraman, a writer uh, for the top media organizations around the world. Uh, working uh, in uh, Cleveland or, or Paris than in Gaza. They have clearly lowered their standards because Israel made a decision in the last few wars in Gaza not to let international journalists in um, unaccompanied from Israel. So, you know, the top journalists from top media outlets up around the world have come and embedded uh, for a few hours, and, and that's it. Uh, 2014 war, they were actually let in just like that on their own. Uh, but Israel didn't want to be blamed for journalists dying, which we have been anyway, of course. Um, and uh, we uh, wanted to be very careful. So uh, who has been reporting this war from Gaza? Um, freelancers that they've hired from Gaza, ordinary people with cell phones, and uh, we've caught them doing some terrible things. We questioned initially how did some of these journalists know to come into Israel so early? And some of the pictures that they took were very early on that day on October 7th. We didn't have actual knowledge that they definitely get embedded by Hamas or be told about it in advance. But over the course uh, of the day, people sent us pictures of uh, some of the uh, photographers we questioned. Well, one together with Yechia Sinwar, uh, Hassan Asliach, uh, he got fired from both CNN and the Associated Press, he would still be working for them if it wasn't for honest reporting. And uh, since then, we revealed a couple of them who, uh, a video of them bragging about what they did on that day. One said he went into Sterot and he was around where they were kidnapping settler women uh, and uh, apparently killed a dog and uh, broke into a house and he was laughing about how easy it is right now, telling everybody in Gaza, you got to come in. His pictures, his name is Abu Mustafa, his pictures were, were uh, in the top 100 pictures of 2023 in uh, the list of the New York Times and Reuters. Um, he, he just was highlighted in, a, in another thing, 100 days since the war. They put his picture at the top. Uh, this is who the world is getting its information from. Somebody who laughs about the murders of 1,200 Jews. Uh, and so I, I'm glad that we've highlighted, I'm glad that we've raised questions that have made people not trust what's coming out of Hamas-controlled Gaza. Um, they can trust what's coming out of here where they, for the most part, don't have limits. Okay, so you, you're a veteran, veteran journalist. Explain to me how a a world-class media organization lets this happen is it is it laziness is there an agenda behind it what's going on okay so uh, let me take you back in history all the way to uh, another war in gaza in august of 2022 we're going way back here right okay the the, the war breaks out on friday afternoon it's august uh saturday night is tisha B'Av. A, a lot of uh, top journalists are on vacation in August uh, when their kids are off from school. So uh, there are media outlets that find themselves with no one in Israel, not one. Okay, uh, CNN uh, had no one. And uh, so they, they called somebody who worked for them 10 years earlier and he ended up doing okay. The New York Times had no one. Uh, 
Um, so Patrick Kingsley, who once worked for The Guardian, he uh, found a guy that The Guardian had once employed in Gaza. Uh, his name is Fadi Hanona. And he started uh, writing about what was going on in Gaza for the New York Times. He was the main guy covering that war that lasted only two and a half days uh, in the coverage that Patrick, uh, from his vacation, uh, directed, but not from the country. And so uh, we found out the day after the war, by just looking at the social media of the people who covered the war, that Fadi Hanona had written on his social media that Jews are sons of dogs and he's in favor of killing them like Hitler did, including the elderly and the young. So, uh, I mean, Patrick said that that uh, we at Honest Reporting did a better job of vetting than he did. And with that guy, he said, and I said, one guy, how about three? Because earlier that day, I told my team, I'm having lunch with the bureau chief of the New York Times. Uh, give me something to talk about. And they found another guy who had praised Hitler on social media, another guy who praised the Harnof terrorist attack. Uh, which was uh, shooting and stabbing and the model for shootings and stabbings in synagogues around the and churches and mosques around the world, Pittsburgh, Poway, Christchurch, Copenhagen. Um, so that's uh, last year. <laughs> These people, hey, uh, it's terrible. Uh, you know, we, we, AP hired a guy, Isam Adwan, who had written on social media in English. The other guy was in Arabic. In English, that Israel needs to be annihilated and the Palestinians need to revolt and compare Israelis to Nazis. The New York Times rehired one of those guys that we got fired the year before. Uh, they hired a guy who praised Hitler to cover a war that tried to annihilate the Jewish state. So uh, I don't know if they don't care, but the, they have clearly lower standards when they're hiring freelancers in from Gaza. You know, when you had a whole piece, I believe, on how CNN puts their disclaimers for um, for uh, when when the IDF accompanies reporters and whatnot, and they don't do that on the flip side in Gaza. So can you elaborate on that and, and explain like wh why the double standard? It can't just be they don't have uh, enough resources and those reporters in Gaza. Again, it's very clear um, they have a different standard. You're, you're on mute. You went on no, mute. No, no, I unmuted it. Don't worry. Um, so the uh, in Israel, we have freedom of the press. And uh, you had journalists come from all over the world, parachute into here, um, some with very little knowledge about what's going on over here, um, uh, but some who uh, came in and did a great job. We, I think that we have to be thankful to uh, Anderson Cooper, who... Uh, came in uh, from CNN, uh, saw what the, what the what the Nova Dance Festival went into uh, where so many kids were murdered there in that bomb shelter and cried um, and uh, presented that to the world. Um, in, I'm a, two blocks away from the uncle of, of uh, Hirsch Goldman, uh, Goldberg, uh, whose parents have gone around the world campaigning for his release in such a beautiful way. Uh, well, uh, Anderson Cooper, uh, he could have, when he interviewed them on live TV, told them, I have a, actually have a live, uh, I have a recording uh, video of your son. Instead, he told them when they stopped recording, can I give you a call in a few minutes? And privately showed it to them. You know, that's really being a mensch. He could have surprised them on live TV. So you've had a high caliber people that have come here. Where, whereas in Gaza, um <sighs> They uh, have gotten whoever they can get. Uh, and I, I, don't, I don't know if in retrospect how smart a decision it was to not let the um, the uh, journalists come in. Uh, but uh, it is it is what it is. And uh, they do air disclaimers about the soldiers, the, about the journalists that went into Gaza accompanied by the IDF. I, I wish they would put some kind of disclaimer uh, about the reports from Gaza to say uh Hamas controls Gaza. It's a terrorist group. And the journalists have to, you know, if they want to stay alive, report what the Hamas wants them to report. Hey, let me ask you, in terms of honest reporting's activities in finding the falsehoods or the misinformation, are you able to characterize who those journalists are? Meaning we've spoken about 
photographers and journalists, freelancers in Gaza. But looking at all of your um, kind of uh, monitoring the media, are they are they typically Palestinian journalists where the issues lie, or or they could be any Western journalists from anywhere in the world? There are no Western journalists in the Gaza except for one and CNN who came in with a uh, Qatar from Qatar with a relief mission and, and managed to stay that way. I'm saying um, beyond, beyond the Gaza war. Oh, beyond the Gaza war, we've been covering media from around the world and honest reporting um, and, and making sure that we're treated fairly. Uh, uh, you know, we're not out to make the journalists more pro-Israel or less pro somebody else. Uh, but we're out to make sure they get the facts straight, which I'd like to think that they want to do. Uh, but uh, this has been noticed by uh, the enemies of Israel. There have been reports about honest reporting on Hamas TV, Hezbollah TV, um, e Iran's 24-hour propaganda, press TV. Um, they aired me on the press TV. They, they showed me holding my little girl, putting the ballot in the ballot box on election day in order to say we, we know how to get to your children it was disgusting uh they were trying to intimidate us and, and it won't work uh, we've gotten eight hitler and hamas praising journalists fired around the world uh over the last since the august 2022 war including three from the new york times two from ap and two from cnn and uh, we're restoring deterrence for israel on the media battlefield I can't imagine what that's like to, to see your picture with a child um, by the enemies of Israel. Wow. Wow. I, I hope um, that is all past and that's no longer a, a personal concern of yours. And, and I hope you made a story out of that because I think that's, um, that's important to tell. You can see the video on social media and, and please uh, check us out on social media. We've gone in uh, one year from having 2022, 4 million people see our content on social media to in 2023, 123 million. We, that's where the action is, 75 million at least uh, since uh, between October 7th and the end of the year. Um, because we gotta be reaching out beyond our echo chamber to the young people around the world who wanna know what's going on. Wow, wow. So that's a, that's a good note to all of our viewers who are, are listening and watching right now. If you haven't heard of Honest Reporting, certainly look certainly look them up look gill up so you can really really follow all of this so let's let's talk about the, the consumers of the media when these gross errors are put out or when people see photos coming from palestinian reporters does, does the do the public recognize these issues meaning do you need to tell the world what's going on or there's this, this recognition and they need some type of professional staff in order to call them out I wish more would be called out. Uh, you, you know, st our stories have been picked up by media outlets around the world, uh, especially that one uh, about the photographers. But, uh, you know, we had a report uh, a week and a half ago about a woman named Jessica Burbank, who is a regular uh, analyst on uh, The Rising, which is a popular show with young people on the Hill. Uh, and she said all kinds of disgusting things that the uh, IDF rapes people, uh, and uh, social media um, that that, uh, that uh, she said uh, that settlers go and, and uh, rape Palestinians. And she gave absurd numbers that this huge percentage of Palestinians have been sexually assaulted. It was just so far away from the truth. And uh, we highlighted her and, you know, nothing's happened to her. I wrote her editor who fired some in the past for saying things not nearly as bad. Um, you know, we need to have campaigns out there when we reveal disgusting behavior by journalists around the world so there'll be consequences because they're not going to do it themselves. Only when there's significant pressure do they take action. And we're not trying to get them fired. We're, uh, you know, as my CEO says, uh, they just shouldn't be covering anti some. If they don't like Jews, they shouldn't be covering the Jewish state. They can write a, a cooking blog, you know, in, in uh, Japan somewhere. Sure, and we put the, the link um, in the chat here for anyone who wants to take action and, and help uh, support these things. Let's let's shift if we can to try to talk about some some positive. Are you able to share potentially some news sources that you would recommend for our viewers? Meaning, I'll I'll put this out there. Your your column in Jerusalem Post, everyone should check out. But 
But in addition to that, are there are there news agencies which you find to be the most favorable and honest in terms of their reporting on what's happening in Israel? I'm so sorry, Moshe. I don't feel confident nowadays in, in telling people to go to any media outlet to get accurate information. They have to be careful wherever they go. You know, I, you know look, the Wall Street Journal ain't what it used to be. The Washington Post ain't what it used to be. You know, they've brought in people from around the world that were covering Ukraine a few weeks ago, and they don't know what's going on here, and they're reporting to the world, and they're getting things wrong. Uh, um I just can't have that on my conscience. But nor do I tell people to stop getting the the New York Times at home. You know, I, I bet out of the 462 people here, you know, uh, more than half are in the New York area, and, and uh, out of those, half have uh, canceled their subscription to the New York Times. No, <laughs> you need to read it and tell the world what's wrong. And when you see what's wrong, then uh, email. I've got one of the URLs didn't work there in the chat. Email action at honestreporting.com and um, we will get it. We, we need you to, to be the eyes and the ears. I have a very small staff. I have only four people monitoring the media around the world and, and a social media staff of two. So um, you know, we rely on, on people like you when they are, are watching media outlets around the world and they see something disgusting uh, or, or read something online or, or in print, uh, send it to us so we'll know. For sure, that is so important. Okay, what about, what about Israeli media? Do you have these issues with certain Israeli media outlets that you're monitoring and checking? You smile. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Hey, look, um, we had a rule that, we, in general, we don't follow Israeli media. We follow media from 190 out of 192 countries in the world. The only two that we don't are Canada because there is Honest Report in Canada, which is a separate organization. And anyway, Canadians who are more polite than other human beings uh, and the rest of the earth uh, require a, a little bit of a different approach than uh, the uh, non-Canadian people on earth. Uh, but Israel, uh, we're not out to uh, correct uh, what's going on here. Uh, we're a democracy where the media play a role as being a watchdog for the uh, Israeli government. And uh, uh, we're out to improve how Israel is seen around the world. Now, so when do we end up having to deal with Israeli media? Um, the answer is when Haaretz or another media outlet gets something so wrong and it's parroted around the world. Haaretz reported that the, the IDF sent helicopters to kill people at the Nova Festival. And the uh, IDF uh, immediately denied that completely, and uh, yet it was picked up all around the world. I still see it, uh, this uh, false accusation that uh, uh, out of the 1,200 people, uh, the majority were killed by the IDF. The, the Palestinians are saying that day in and day out. Do you think that was an honest mistake or an agenda? Uh, there's no doubt that the Haaretz has a very critical agenda of the Israeli government, no matter who's in power. And with you and you have the most right wing government in Israel's history, uh, even more so. Um, so you, you got to follow the Israeli media with a grain of salt, too. But I do want to uh, take a sh shout out the, the Jerusalem Post. They're trying. They're trying to get it right. My wife is the deputy CEO. I worked there for 24 years. I still have a column every other week that I encourage you to see at Gil jpost.com slash author slash Gil dash Hoffman. Put that in here, too. Uh, so uh, yeah, we're, you can trust uh, that they're at least uh, trying to get it right. OK, so honest reporting is very much calling out and policing, monitoring the media. But how do you how do you reframe the conversation and the whole orientation to the media? that it's, it's positive messaging getting out and not always having to be behind the curve and having to, to fight the negative. Is that ever a possibility or that's just a pipe dream and we're always going to be on the defense? Uh, Moshe, I, I don't give up. You know, I, I, we got to be doing uh, offense and defense uh, all the time uh, in order to uh, win this war. And everybody's involved in the slogan of the Israeli water authorities, every drop matters. And uh, I mean it. Uh, and uh, but uh, yeah, we, we, we're having an, Im an impact and uh, positively, too. 
uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, today, uh, there were demonstrations that lasted a long time in Gaza, ordinary Gazan citizens protesting against Hamas to end the war and, and bring back uh, whatever normalcy they had before. We wanted the world to know about that. We put it on Instagram. Um, and uh, I'll give you uh, another example. Um, we have a TikTok video that we put out two days ago highlighting the real Gaza. Um, do you know how wealthy parts of Gaza are? People think it's an open air prison because of a media campaign uh, that's completely false. Um, people think all the people there are poor uh, and uh, it's not true. Uh, you know, uh, I have a good friend who was there in Gaza with his unit and they got intelligence that right by them, there's a tunnel uh, entrance and it ended up being the engine area for a swimming pool. Villa there in Gaza. Why do you think the international media doesn't want to share that story of Gaza? How does that harm their narrative? International media has a narrative that the Israel is uh, the aggressor and that the Palestinians are the underdog. And, and it's wrong. Uh, you know, uh, we were 22 Arab countries, 57 Muslim countries, one Jewish state uh, that are built out of the ashes of the Holocaust and expulsion from all of those Arab and Muslim countries. We need to be reminding the world of that. That's the true narrative. We need to be reminding the people on college campuses that uh, Jews are the most discriminated against minority in America. Um, and uh, by far. Um, and uh, we are victims uh, in, in an era when victimhood is something that helps you or PR, we might as well play that game too and, and embrace our victimhood, but also be strong. For sure. Gil, thank you so much for joining me. Final question. Many of our viewers are very active on the local level. They write to their newspapers. They communicate with their elected officials. In terms of dealing with their local media, what do you think that the top issue to express when, when taking an interview or writing an op-ed in terms of the messaging that Israel needs to get out there? Well, what's the top thing they should try to focus on? Moshe, for the people that care about Israel and the, all the people here do, October 7th feels like yesterday. Now, our wounds are so open, our hostages aren't home uh, and uh, our, our friends and neighbors and colleagues are, are still there in Gaza fighting. Uh, for the rest of the world, uh, ancient history, they don't remember what happened. All they know is that I Israel's bombing Gaza and um, uh, given following numbers that are ridiculous, that are trusting the uh, Hamas health department that has no numbers of civilian deaths in Gaza. Every single human being who died in, since October 7th uh, it was uh, murdered by Israelis, and, and they believe it. So they, they need to know, if we're going to use a word I, I can learn from Harvard, uh, they need to know the context. October 6th, the Biden administration was moving full speed ahead uh, toward a deal with Saudi Arabia that uh, would have ended the Arab-Israeli conflict, except for the allies of Iran and the Palestinians till they get better leaders. And uh, the Palestinians would have been helped tremendously by that deal. You know, that it would have tripled the amount of Gazans coming into work in Israel. Now, we all know what those Gazans who came into work in Israel did on October 7th. Uh, but uh, it was supposed to improve their quality of life. And Iran started this war to prevent that deal from happening. And Iran is continuing the, the this uh to hurt both the, the uh, Palestinians living in Gaza, the ordinary civilians, and us. Uh, and the, those civilians aren't so innocent either, with 85% of their homes uh, and public buildings had some kind of terror infrastructure in them. That's crazy. Uh, you know, the Germans couldn't say we didn't know. And the, the Hamas uh, controlled Gaza so tightly that nobody there couldn't have known either. Um, and so they have to know we do everything possible to minimize loss of life to civilians. They've done everything possible to maximize loss of life to civilians. Get those messages out to the media outlets around the world, wherever you are. Uh, we need all the help that we can get because uh, we're all part of that effort to win on that media battlefield. That's the key to winning on the military battlefield. And all of you can be involved 
uh, please give us any support you can uh, to Honest Reporting for the future. We're a 501c3 um, and uh, it's honestreporting.com slash donate. Thanks so much. Gil, thank you so much for joining. And we posted all of those links in the chat. We'll get them out also in the follow-up email when we send out the recording. This has been very, very informative. Thank you, of course, to all of our viewers and supporters for tuning into this briefing. We will be back with you tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. Eastern time. Tomorrow is the IDSF Israel Security Summit in Ashkelon, and it will be live streamed in Hebrew. Um, however, Danny Seaman and I will uh, make sure to provide tomorrow during our briefing uh, a, a review and an update uh, from Ashkelon on all that is uh, unfolding. So thank you so much. Until then, stay safe, stay strong. Take care, everyone.